Okay, so it's been a while since I've just done a general trick, a general tip in Photoshop. And I think this is one that is pretty cool and has potential for a lot of different things. Uh, and for some reason, just people don't think about it, at least most people anyway. It starts with the idea of setting an adjustment layer. In this case, I'm going to start with hue and saturation. I'll explain that in a minute, right? And we're going to start with the adjustment layer and we're, we want to mask it, but we want to group it into a, you know, an adjustment layer group or a layer group in general by itself. So immediately, com command or control G, and there it is. And this is just going to be called for masking. Okay. So it's masking within masking. And we're going to take it a couple of levels up later in the video too. All right. So what's our vision? I don't know, but let's just say that we use our hue and saturation layer and we colorize and we're going to make it like a purple. I don't know why, but we're going to make it like a purple. And then we have a vision. I know I want to purple eyes. I want to add this violet purple pink thing. Uh, I'm going to make it a little more pink. And I want to add this tone to the shadows, but only in specific areas and only on Tina. Not everywhere else, not just all the shadows and not, not everywhere on the whole image, just on her. Okay. We can certainly create one mask for that. We can build a mask for that, but why not make it flexible for our, you know, flexibility so we can be adaptable we can we can get it in there exactly like we want so let's go the vision is pinks in the shadows and only in specific areas and only on her okay cool so maybe we're going to turn off our, our folder completely maybe we should start with a subject mask makes sense so we're going to go photoshop's ai subject selection because it's so good we're going to start with that once that selection is done we're going to put that mask that we're about to create on the layer group that only has one adjustment layer in it, right? For masking, there's a selection. While it's running, we hit our mask button. Pretty straightforward. We have masked out just the model, just Tina. And now this color is everywhere. Cool. All right. Well, how do we put it only on the shadows? Hmm. Okay. Well, there's a couple of ideas we can do. One, we can double click the right side of the layer and open up blend if, right? And we can move our blend diff settings. You know, we have videos on this, by the way, but just kind of show you how blend diff works. Look how cool that is. Maybe a little less. There you go. And now we have our shadows only on her. It's not a permanent mask. Sure, the subject mask is, but this isn't. We can play with it. We can go one step further. We're going to take that mask and invert it. Now we have ourselves set up to do a beautiful, you know, whatever we want to do to mask in, to paint in, excuse me, the exact areas that we want only. We, we can even do it with like a 10% flow. Let's try that, right? So we come in here, we can paint as sloppy as we want, but we can lightly tone the shadows wherever we want to tone them, only on her, and it can be very sloppy, only on her. And like I said, this is, you know, when I do these demos, it's not to try to say that this is how you should do it, you know, oh, you should purple, you should make your shadows purple. Do it just like this. It looks great. I, I don't know. This is just a demonstration, okay? But I'm blending in. Now, if we look at that mask, you know, the one on the actual adjustment layer, we see it's a disaster. But it's wonderful because it's masked out by the blend diff, right? And on top of that, the subject is masked out on top. This gives us some flexibility, okay? And I want you to keep that idea in mind as we build even more flexibility if we want it. Now, a uh, uh, blend if is more of an instruction, right? But we can also do a raster mask. So let's go ahead and remove the blend if. Okay. And then we're going to make this mask black again. Okay, cool. Now let's build a quick luminosity mask. Okay. So we're going to go to our gradient map and I have some presets here. My luma selections. I'm going to choose shadows low. Okay, cool. While I see that, I use my key command option command two or alt control two. There we go. And now I have that subject, excuse me, that, that luminosity selected. Turn off the gradient map temporarily, come to my hue and saturation layer, and boom, invert that. Now, as you can see, we're doing only the shadows there. And then the masking on top is, you know, the folder mask is the actual subject. So now, once again, it is limited. But here, that's more permanent, right? What do we do here? Well, we can work the opposite. We can paint with black and paint away from where we don't want the purple. See, it's just a workflow option, right? And again, we can be sloppy because our subject mask is controlled, right? So we're just rebuilding our mask a little bit. We start with a perfect one and then we blend it out. That of course is permanent and a lot of people don't want that. Discussions about why we want a luminosity mask, a raster one, versus why we want blend if are, are complete other discussions. And we have videos on that, don't get me wrong. 
So how do we keep our flexibility even more? Well, we can go crazy. Let's just, this is mostly going to be a demo, but let's just go ahead and do it. Okay. So this over here, this is our colorizer. So we're going to call this colorizer, right? We know that's making anything purple. That's our, all our data is purple. Now for masking, we're doing obviously just subject, right? So a couple things we can do here. I'm going to group the for masking folder. We're going to call that for more masking. Again, this is just a, a demonstration, guys. So what I want to do is I'm, I'm going to change the order around a little bit. I'm going to hold down alter option. I'm going to take the mask from for masking group, drag it up to for more masking. And now we have a subject masked on, on a subject. But on the masking, we're going to go ahead and remove that. You know what? Let's just make this more subject uh, mask. We'll make this a little more logical. Hold up a second. And then we'll put here a shadow mask. Okay, cool. You see where this is going. So come back here, turn on our gradient map, run our selection, or rather, you know, what, make a selection from what we're viewing, and then boom, now it's a shadow mask, right? Okay, cool. Now, I have the colorizer, which if I invert it, it's everything. It shows it on the shadows and only on the subject, but I can also paint in uh, you know what? And what's cool is that I can change my mind. I don't have to worry about destroying a mask. I don't have to worry about destroying a raster mask like I did earlier. I can just paint sloppily wherever I want and add in that purple wherever I felt I want it. Again, that this is not this is not lovely. I don't think this is a good idea, but <laughs> this is our working area and we can change our mind at any time. So we can just fill that with black. Excuse me. I didn't mean to do that. We can just fill that with black. Okay. And then come back in and paint wherever. As you can see, it's limited. Now you might think that's 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 a lot of setup. I know, I know it's a lot of setup. It's more of a demo. And you can set up an action to do this. You can. You can set up an action that'll pop up. In fact, we had actions a long time ago that did that. Um, and you can set that up so where it automatically sets up the shadows and subject mask out. Now you're probably thinking, can this go another step further? It, it actually can, because you can technically group that and we'll call it even more masking right okay cool and then for whatever reason uh we're gonna make a mask on that and we're gonna invert it and we're going to casually uh, paint only the face there we go cool so now if i paint on the colorizer i can't go past this range <laughs> again not necessarily useful but when you want to build a masking structure that's like a mask within a mask it can be very very useful for exploring you know sometimes it's needed to get the exact masking that you want and you probably don't need to go any more than two uh masks within mask i mean this this third one and fourth one and fifth one it all gets a little bit silly but it can be done especially if you set up actions so just keep that in mind don't don't forget you can mask within a mask okay keep that in mind and that's a little bit ridiculous i know but let me show you a quick workflow of something that we might actually do right so let's come over here and we're going to go to levels i'm going to put it on luminosity blend mode i do want to bring up some shadows in here kind of in a casual way i'm not worried about the highlights cool i'm going to invert that excellent and i'm going to group it i want to make sure i don't have any spillover so i'm going to do the subject selection Okay, and then use that to mask there. All right, and then on here, uh, I think I'll use Blend If just to get it away from the highlights, something like that. We're gonna see what that looks like. Let's see if this gives us any effect at all. We're gonna go 100% at first. Okay, all right, a little strong, a little strong. But let's go zoom in a little bit, 10%. And we can bring up our shadows wherever we wanna bring them up. As you can see, very lightly, it's all not permanent. So I can go to my levels and change it, only bringing up those shadows. And of course I can change the range of it with this, with Blend If. Now keep in mind, Blend If is probably the most flexible option, but every now and then, like I said, every now and then you need to use a, a raster mask. Okay, and you can use black to clean up the mask in the other direction. It's just a way, oops, it's just a way of giving you did not mean to do all of that one moment. <laughs> you can paint with black in the opposite direction and kind of tone some of that down <clears throat> and paint with white to bring some of that back. And of course, opacity is on your side too. So you can scale it back with opacity. There's a 60%. It's just a way to, to modify certain ranges or anything that you need to mask. It doesn't have to be luminosity ranges. A mask within a mask, excuse me, a mask within a mask <laughs> can be super, super cool for lots of reasons. Play around with the idea. 
ask me any questions in the comments below um, but it's just one of those kind of things that i do subconsciously when i'm trying to really target something and it works super super great <music>